Ready, tweets? Hi, you guys. It's Acrylic Painting Monday with Ginger Cook. And we're going to be continuing our series of painting from the old masters, or what I call the old EGs or the old dead guys. You know, we're going to talk, we're going to uh, introduce again an artist that we did very early on on, on, um, on YouTube. His name is Frisk, and we're going to do one of his paintings. And it's going to, I, don't panic, this is going to be really easy. And I've got some great tips on when you're doing something like this and you're kind of bringing it up to today, you know, something done a hundred years ago and you're trying to make it a little more modern or maybe bring it up to today, things that you might want to do. In fact, I strongly recommend you do, and I'll be telling you about that. So let's let's just have a blast and just kind of whew, release all 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 the <laughs> just, all the stuff of the day, release it all. Oh, you're killing me. Just, <laughs> you're killing just, me. You people need to do this. And it's, you know, with the time 5.30 rolls around Central Time for in Texas, a lot of stuff has happened. Wherever you, maybe stuff's happened where you are. Let's just release it. Release it. What is this? Is this a new? Um... It's what I need to do <laughs> to get going with you. And I'm sure if it helps me, it's how to help you too. Yeah. So, all right. Come on down to our table. Let me just show you. Um, in honor of sort of the February Valentine's Day stuff, I thought these tulips were really neat. Now, there's some stuff about this painting I really love. Let me just show you. Look at the beautiful blue reflections in that vase, and he's got some of that blue on the leaves, right? And then, uh, and then on the other hand, <laughs> um, there's just... It looks like the, because he didn't give us a wall or anything or a shadow or anything, I'm not sure that the vase is sitting on anything. It's floating. Or it's ready to fall off the wall. It's a little problem with some of this, but that's okay. I'm going to make some corrections, but I'm going to show you why. And we're also going to talk about um, how to do a fun background. This, this kind of looked to me like he sat in his paint. And then just, I don't know, I don't, can't stand the background either. That's okay, but I liked overall. I kind of like the idea of it. So we were one of the things John and I do, and um, is before I tell you what that is, I want to <laughs> welcome our mods who are, you know, when we do a premiere, John and I are typing and saying hi and doing all that stuff. Premieres are where we uh, do a video first, and then um, Arrow premiere it, air it, and then we're somewhere where we can uh, participate. Usually, we are able to participate in the live chat. So, and our mods join us, and you, you know, if you will answer questions. Now and, we are assuming that we have good internet internet connection, and we are actually there with you. Yeah, if we don't have internet connection, this is uh, sometimes we do these when we're traveling, and uh, mostly we can do them. And if we're not there, <laughs> enjoy. Okay. <laughs> Pretend <laughs> like we are. <laughs> Pretend like we are. There you go. Thumbs up. Woohoo. Release. Release. Okay. So now. Uh, <laughs> release. Okay. Release. All right. I feel like I'm in prison. I've been released. Well, listen, that the last couple of years kind of has felt like that. Mm -hmm. We're, we finally got out of town. All right. So this is a 9 by 12 canvas. See? And it does. How we get these backgrounds is when we have leftover paint, John just it used to be he just would very diligently give me a background. Now he gets creative. He's just <laughs> he can't just paint black. I, color I, I anymore. couldn't resist myself. He, he just starts well, look at the colors in that. It's just gorgeous. It's very pretty. It's kind of a nice, nice abstract all by itself. But we're gonna but we're gonna cover that baby right now. We're up. gonna cover so how would you do a background like this? Well, one of the things you can do is you, with acrylic paint, guess what? You can paint over stuff. No way. Do I have to gesso it first? No. Look, here's just um, a piece of canvas sheet, and I had it sort of dark, and then I think I was doing some tests of, of color on it, okay? So what, I don't remember. It's so long ago, I have no idea what this was even about. I didn't throw it out, though. No. So we're going to take some of our Salvador paint, which is a very high-quality premium paint, and um, uh, when we do premieres, I just, uh, with these Stay Wet palettes, I can keep one palette going a long time. And I'm going to take a large brush. This is a half inch, three quarter inch uh, angle brush by Bristol on. But, you know, really stiff. And I want, what I want to do is I want to create sort of more of a background. I don't like this background. This looks like, I don't know what this looks like. I don't know. But I like the idea of this, but not all of it, okay? 
So I like more of what John did. So I know that that's, I know that's burnt umber. That's yellow oxide. Uh, that's probably um, a little bit of white in there. A little bit of burnt sienna. Okay. So that's nice. So let's uh, let's just grab a little bit of those colors all on the brush at the same time, and let's just uh, kind of do some X's, and then I'll get some more color like this. Okay, like that. There you go. I'm just gonna cover it up, and I'll have an interesting. I'll actually have an interesting background because of the lights and darks on this um, this painting. And so here I'm kind of out of. Some dark brown. I think I'll even take some black over here. I'll put in some of that color. Ooh, too much. Let's take some. Let's take <laughs> some orange bold. then. Yeah, let's take some orange color. There. All right. There you go. I can do that. When you put black in it, it's gone, right? So I don't like that. Where, where's my brown going? Okay. Here. Um. Here's some of the burnt umber. Um. We gotta put that out anyway. And some burnt sienna. So suppose you get a color on there and you thought it was great. I mean, it seemed like a great idea at the time, but you know what? It uh, it left a little bit to be desired. What can you do? Just take a little palette knife and just Good scrape up. Don't wipe it off. Just kind of scrape up what you don't want. That's actually not bad, is it? A little bit of that purple shows underneath. That's pretty. What can I do there? That's kind of... All right. I don't hate that. I mean, a lot of times it comes down to... I don't hate that. <laughs> you don't have to love it, but you don't hate it quite yet. You know what I mean? Sometimes that's all you get, right? Well, I don't really hate it, so I keep going. Keep trying to get that fine tuning yeah, yeah, in there. So it, it, I'm glad you don't hate it. Here we go. Here's some. Oh, I'm going to rinse the brush off because I had that black on it. I want that. So and then I need to put the yellow oxide out again. But um, Salvador has very soft, soft paints, but they're highly pigmented. So they're very nice. So here's some more of that yellow oxide color. Here we go. Here kind we go. Of, kind of a medium body. Kind of a medium body paint. Not real soft, not like a flow, but uh, not real stiff like a heavy body either. So here we go. Like that. Let's take a little bit of this transparent white color. I say, now you're starting to get what I did. And I kind of get what John did, right? But this is kind of how you would do it, right? Just something like that. This, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You may change it later. You know, so what, what could you do? Could, could you dry it and change it later? Don't don't get too crazy with this, but you know, maybe put some music on it. Just go do 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 do. <laughs> okay. And release it all. Release it all. Let it go. Let it, Let go. it flow over you. Well. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> all right. So oh, there you go. My. We're going to leave that alone now because we really that was just for the demonstration. Because some of you would have said, how did she get that color background? Well, you'll never get quite the same one. And even if you just... Whoa, 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 whoa. That palette knife? Yeah, in the water. Uh-huh. Uh, even if you just didn't get exactly the same one, does it really matter? No, it's a now, background. I want to talk to you about, this is our back, this is 9 by 12. This is our picture. Nine one of the 12. things that you've got to do is don't just use one reference. If you're going to be painting tulips, print out eight, nine, ten pictures of tulips from different angles. Maybe you took some yourself. You could just go up on Google Images and just go photos of tulips. We did close-ups of tulips. Um, and we found, like this one, um, notice on this one we found, um, notice how this leaf and this leaf are very similar. Tulips, uh, 100 years later, they still do their fun little leafy trick, don't they? And they're very similar in color, aren't they, considering this is sort of faded? But, I mean, you can see the – would you say this was an olive green or more of a blue green? It's kind of more of a blue green, isn't I'd it? I'd say blue green. It's a blue green. Olive greens, you know. So that means probably you're going to want thalo blue. Uh, you know, Salvador has all those greens. But nonetheless, if you didn't, you'd want the thalo blue. Now, what else do we see about that? Well, we see how the – um. We see how some of the leaves are kind of like this tip of the leaf is kind of round. They come to a point. Uh, we, they kind of curve around. They have shadows. So we see that. Now, here's another photo I found because I thought, well, we're doing kind of purple flowers. So what do the flowers actually look like? What is the shape? Now, here is this one thing about it. Um, just like pine trees, 
there's different varieties of tulips. Boy, the Dutch are masters of that. Have you ever seen some of their wild tulips in, in Holland? Unbelievable. But generally speaking, you can see that they kind of, they go up to kind of a point like that. And what happens when they open up that they, they're rounded a little bit more. But you get the idea there's a light and a dark side to them. And you can kind of see how they attach to this, uh, the base of the, of, of the stem. So that's a good reference, right? And again, we're talking about the same crazy colors, right? And uh, now let's go, well, here's my third reference. Um, I thought this was really nice. The, the photographer made the greens a little darker. Um, now here's the deal. If you have a dark background, you wouldn't want to put the greens that dark because they wouldn't show up. So even if you have a reference photo as well, these greens, you'd have to do a light background, and that's not the picture we're doing today. But we are getting, again, the shape of the leaves, the the, the flower. You see here the, the shape of the flower, the colors, how they open up. So the similarities, where they attach, all of that stuff. So um, here's some glass reflection in the, in the vase. You see, like, like here's the tulips in the vase. Here's the, the stems in the glass vase. We have that over here in this one a little bit, too. Now look here. That's even more close because more close, more closer. Yeah, more <laughs> close, more closer. Because look and see how these stems are in the water, and the water it, they got kind of gold colored. These are more of an olive green in the water. Well, and again, no, that's going to reflect from the background. Yeah, because it's yeah, it's reflecting on the background, and also you've got a little blue on the bottom of this face. There's a little blue here. Um, we're not too far out of the park. So just try to when you're looking at photos like this. You know, again, we're not copying this photo. We're just, we're trying to understand tulips. And you see the shadow here on the inside of this tulip where the leaf kind of comes and bends over. He's got the same thing. He's got that same shape on that leaf. You see that? And see how it's a little darker here and a little bit darker right there? Do you see that? So this isn't some sort of accidental picture. Even though this is a very abstract picture and there's some funny little cute little I don't know what these are, some sort of little plant that he had, some sort of weird thing he had going up here. He had some blue. This is a very good representation of tulips, even though it's very impressionistic. So you look at how this one is curving under. Look at how this one's coming over. So there's a little bit of this, um, something these leaves seem to do, they, they stay in water a little bit and then they all fall apart. So yeah, it's just to fall down and, you know, right? I don't know. So as much as you can observe your photos and your picture, like before you ever start, what are you painting? There you ask yourself, what am I painting? And as much as you can understand about what you're painting, it's just like they tell authors to, um, you know, if you were going to write a book about living in an igloo, it might have been good if you'd lived in one. Okay? That's just true. saying. So if you're writing a book about, if you're writing a book about tulips, you might, you might want to live in one. You, want, want, well, you can't live in a tulip <laughs> shop. <laughs> but you might want to know a little more about them. Right? Yes. Um, and the you same Google. thing when you're painting them. The painting is, what you've got, you guys, in the old days, back in the day, you know, they always say that back in the day. Well, I don't know how many days it was, a long time ago. So one time I can remember anything. However, I can tell you this, <laughs> tell you this, that there wasn't any of this. You know, if you were planning to paint tulips in the winter, good luck finding any, because there wasn't any, and there wasn't an internet where you could just go find stuff. And there may, may be in a gardening magazine somewhere, but it was wintertime, you're going to find tulips. Um, the resources you have at your fingertips are phenomenal. Use them. Wow. Are you going to get off your soapbox now? Can we start painting? Oh, release. <laughs> Let it flow over you. Let it flow. Let it flow. All right. Releasing. All right. So we're back to the... the. Um, Do you have Sorrel paper? I give up. Do I have it? I, I, I don't know. I hope so. I've got everything ready for you, Ginger, except for the paper. Okay. This will work. All right. So let's make sure that this transfer... This John's lovely background. He used to paint the transfers. He did. Okay. So... It's a gorgeous background. It's a gorgeous background, but we have discovered this. This paper doesn't... Always transfer on all brands. It doesn't of like paint. that gray that we've used. Doesn't like certain things. We, we'll, we'll do a um, 
you know, we'll do an experiment sometime. I've got a stack of paint over here in the corner. One day we'll just do that. Shall we do it? Oh, we'll sure. Just... Yeah, when we're bored. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm going to just kind of attach that there, and I'm going to put my my picture here. Um. Someone says, well, I, I would use the color printouts, but it's too expensive to keep printing. Uh, HP, that's Sheila Packard, uh, makes a printer that um, puts you on a, like, like under $5 a month, like $4 a month or something. I think they've gone there around four. You, you can print all the color copies. I mean, hundreds of colors, you know, a couple hundred color copies. They, they really weren't, they didn't do this deal for artists. Because, you know, as you know, color ink is, gets more expensive when you start printing in color than black and white ink, yeah? And they, they kind of, they kind of um, didn't calculate the fact that artists would go, great, and they, they even send you cartridges as they tell you you're running out. Like, if you start to run out of red, they'll send you another one. This is like Santa Claus, they just know. <laughs> they just know. And, um... And it's very handy. So if you're talking about and and they when they first kind of came out with that program a few years ago, they just had I don't know one printer. Now they got like ten oh, different they got printers. Lots of them. Yeah. And you, so just cheap printer and um, that ink cartridge through the Packard's is a really good printer for artists because it allows you to print in color, like really cheap. That's your second tip. Let it go. Oh, you, you better be writing them down. All right, so cut. let's let's make sure this works. Oh, it did. All right, so we're going to come along here. I'm using a colored pen so I can see where I'm going. And we're going to put this um, vase in, like so. I'm not, I am just don't know what you were doing there, darling, but I, I, we're not doing that. Here we go, and here's this. Leaf comes over this one. You're not going to second guess them, are you? I'm going to second guess them. And we're going to say this happened here. And then he wasn't sure about this leaf or this one. But we know we've got a tulip coming out here. I'm generally not a big fan of bringing something out this way. But it does keep this. This keeps you going. So it's okay. Generally speaking, I'm not a big fan of having lines go out of your... Here we go. Here's the, this leaf is bent. See like that. See and then it comes and twists around. We showed you how they do that in real life. Here's the tulip. Here's the tulip. I'm hearing thunder in the background. It's just for atmosphere. Here, it's here you go. Here's definitely. another leaf, and it's coming around this way, tipping down like that. This is going this way. Well, I don't know. Obviously, it's going some sort of way. I don't know if this way makes any sense to you or not. Really don't like that one at all. Well, you don't like the way that, you know. It's, it's, but just, you can fix that in. You have references. I have references. I don't like that one. I think that was, um, maybe his flowers were dying as he was painting them. I don't know. I don't like that one. So I think it would be better if it went to a point. What do you think? Or maybe it just came back bring, down. Bring it down. Yeah, right there. Like yeah. that. Just bring it down. I just think that was a little blunt one left a little be desired here. Man, yeah, some bugs probably were chewing on it. And uh, here we go. Here's some stems. And we've got this. This is a pretty one. And this is our sort of, um, well, not that they're all not pretty, but I'm just saying this is an interesting one. It has a little more detail, lights and darks. And we're going to bring this, this one off the canvas like that. And I'm using a, a colored ink so I can see where I've drawn. I don't want to get too far away from what I've done here. Um, I'm not going to draw in too much of what's in the center there because um, I think we'll, you know, that's all kind of fudged. We'll put that in later. Ooh, how about this one? And I would say that's about... Look at that. That's about that's about it. Okay. So let's take this off. Now, the, what, what happened was I got a little bit high up here with this tulip, so I'm going to lower it. All right. When I was transferring, I'll just lower that tulip. 
I don't, I, you want a little bit. You don't want the tulip here. Just, just lower this one like that. Maybe more like that. We're going to lower this tulip like that. So you got a little room up here. Okay. We can certainly do that. So pretty much that's our vase. And then what I want to do is I, we can have a table here like that. That's fine. But I want this to be sitting on some sort of table. All right. It's just we want it. We want ours floating. I don't want mine floating. Okay. So that's pretty easy, yeah. So, uh, let's just. This is artist tape, in case you were wondering what this is. And. Hi, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, background of some of those old dead artists we've been doing, I like to call the ODGs, because we can learn so much from them. And um, Cla uh, Carl Fridisky, or Frederick Carl Fridisky, F-R-I-E-S-E-K-E, -E -E, Frisky was German. And uh, he was born in Germany. Um, he was uh, right 1874, he died in 1939 in the United States. He spent some, his parents moved to the States for a while. He spent some time in Florida, went back to, to Europe. He claims that he was never influenced by Claude Monet, even though he rented a house like two doors down or something. Um, I th personally, looking at his artwork, think he was very influenced by him. He says the only uh, impressionistic art artist that he was inspired by was Renoir. You've got to look at this body of work and see what you think. I personally see a lot of Monet in him. But in any event, all those artists were influenced by each other. He is one of the impressionists that uh, the lady in the garden, we've got a, one with this. Um, uh, it's on YouTube. It's one, of, one we did a few years ago. And it's one of my favorite paintings of his he's done. That We've done a couple others, too. And again, impressionistic painter. Uh, you can find an awful lot about him if you look up on uh, Wikipedia. Just take a moment and read about his uh his life and what he did and his works because um, so much of his art evolved and changed over the years because of the artists that he uh, hung out with and was surrounded by and his friends. And that, that happens with all of us. So, you know, you may see your artwork evolve too, and it's going to evolve every year one way or the other. Things you're, maybe you like him, maybe you never liked Impressionism and now you're finding that you really like it, or maybe you're, what we call a sock folder, someone that likes very precise things, doesn't want a few little dots to make it look like something. But understand the genesis of how this happened and what you can incorporate in your own art style. I hope you enjoy the video of the first painting that we're doing now. And um, again, celebrating the old dead artists and what we can learn. Now, someone's going to say, I like this, but can I put in yellow tulips? That's going to come up, right? Or because red tulips. Or red tulips. Again, you got to think about these light ones. You could probably do yellow ones or kind of off-white ones. You could do that. But you want to remember you got a darker background. So if you start doing red, it's too close to green. You know, it's too dark. So this is probably, these are probably more magenta. Um I would say that's what you got there. All right, so I'm going to put that away. And uh, again, we'll put our references away, but it's good to say, it's good to have them. And that's the thing. I, I think a lot of you, when you're doing your own stuff, you'll, even if it's a, if you're taking photographs of something, um, somebody you wanted to paint your dog, or somebody's dog, and you're taking a photograph of it, then zoom in on the dog and maybe just get the eye. Try to get some details. Take, it's so cheap now to take. You've got a camera that's just, you just print stuff out. You've got a, you've got a digital too. You can blow it up, put it on your iPad. Get more references. That's your New Year's resolution. Get more references. Here, wow. I scold everybody into it. I'll guilt them into it, John. I'm telling you. I feel like I need to keep shooting. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to just go ahead and start with a clean brush and the stamp and uh, I think probably this one's a little bigger than I want let's do the next size down is that the next size down yeah this one is uh five eighths inch and this was 
three quarter. Three quarter so, is bigger than five eighths, in case you were curious. I, I knew that. All right, so let's start with a little white paint and come up here and just paint this tulip in white because we want it to be pink and this is a dark background. So we're gonna do that. And I know I've got a little light one back here. Little tulip back here and I'm gonna put him in. Or her, it could be a her. It could be a her, it doesn't have to be a him. And now we've got one back here. It's going out this way. And you just that can be drying, you see, so you can you can get right in there with the with the white. And here's one here like that. And, and why uh, are you painting it white? Because I'm going to be putting pink over it, and it wouldn't it wouldn't have the nice color otherwise. To see? keep it bright. Yeah. So just to keep it bright and rich in the red tones. Yeah, that's what we want here. I'll just put a little space in there where I did the drawing. Okay, so I know that I want those. And then um, I'm going to take the same white paint. And I want to just come along here on the edge of this vase. And do that. Notice how the you just kind of spin the brush around to get the Kind of twirl it to get the the line. Yeah, just okay. So if you get more line than you want, what you do is um, just erase it. So I don't want it that white. Well, we can do a color, but the other thing is one thing you don't know is you can just come under here like this with a little with a clean damp brush. Just erase anything like that. Kind of fix that line up a little bit, right? So I just didn't want to lose my base here. And um, I'm going to say that there's my table, just the edge of our table. Coming under here like that. And we're going to say back here, there's going to be, we're going to have more table back here. So um, that's pretty straightforward. Let's let's do something else. Let's do um, let's take a little bit of yellow and purple. All right, make kind of a green color, and let's just put this stem in. So we've got yellow and a little purple. We're going to make this really nice green color. You're going, I didn't know you could do uh, yellow and purple and make a green color. Sure, you can. I just showed you. <laughs> just sorry. And um, uh, let's see, is there any others I want to put in here? This one gets a little bit of a stem here. And then I'm going to do the same thing with with this, I want to put some stems down here in my vase. I'm going to put a little bit of their green with it too, and yellow and purple. And I can mix just a little more yellow. Okay, I want this sort of situation where I've got some green stems in here. Then I'm going to take some burnt umber and just darken the inside of my vase here. At least this far. Okay, that's got to be darker up here. Oops. So what I'm doing is I'm looking, where can I put a color? I know I've got something light right here. Let's see. Like that, that's the top of the vase. Okay, so just put some of this color in here like that. Just kind of, I know that that's going there. So, all right, now... As long as we're in these greens, let's take some of this turquoise blue color and add it to that. And I'm going to just say that's this green right here. Okay, we say that there you go. There's this green. I've got that green. I've got kind of a blue green right here. I've got one coming in here like that, back here. 
And I've got a nice, nice one coming down here. Let's get more of that color. This is our first shot of that color coming off like that. I always like to start with the darker colors first. So let's put that in here and just do, let's bring that leaf around. Now, if I want more of an olive green, I can take that, say the lighter green and ultramarine blue, that light green, ultramarine blue. That will give me a pretty good olive green. Um, I think I need more yellow in that. Yeah, let's put a, you can always add red to, to green to make it more of an olive green too. So let's just do that. that. There you go, more of an olive green. We know that this green is this. You want to you want to paint these slightly different sh shades of green, or you're going to lose your you're going to what's going to happen is you're going to lose your um, design. So kind of maybe mix a few greens before you start. That might be a good idea. And say, okay, I want I know I want that to be an olive, and I don't want this one to be very light. So I want a blue green for that very light. I'm going to come up here like that. See, look at that. I want that beautiful blue green coming down here like this. And maybe up across this tulip like this, where it curves. Okay. I've got a little bit of it right there. Where else can I you got to ask yourself, where else can I put that color? That's the secret. Where else can I put that color? Can I add it up here now? Because you get, you've got all these different blues. And what you're doing is that you're layering these colors in. And some of them are more, you know, kind of very blue-green right here. This one's kind of tipped. And then we've got one that's almost completely blue. This one right here really is sort of a blue, that kind of lighter blue from the in the Salvador paints. Um, Probably a cerulean blue here, you know, this is this like that. Maybe a little of that color right there. Put a little more of this color. You always ask yourself, where else can I put that color? And, and look how fast this is going in, right? So I know I want a little bit of that blue color on the bottom of the vase here. I'll go over the white like that. And um Oh, let's take a little bit of that blue color on that stem. Never hurts, right? A little bit more white here on this one. I want this lighter now. So I'm going to just lighten this leaf up. Maybe here's the light part on this one. So you just kind of pull a brush and then spin it and pull it out. This is really kind of almost like what you'd call one stroke painting. And that uh, as you start to add colors in greens and stuff to your to your leaves, right? You're saying, am I going blue green? Am I going olive green? How dark do I want it? It's just it's just showing up, and I see these colors. This one certainly we could have done something more blue green right here on the back side of this leaf. Look at that. Here's a couple of leaves coming like that. You don't have to, you know, just don't get lost in the, um, don't get lost in it. Does that make sense? And so, so much of this is like uh, painting and twisting. Like for instance, right here, I'm gonna have the, this is why you want kind of a wide brush. Look here, I've got it wide right there. I'm gonna do that and then twist it down. That's all you see, and then I'm going to twist it, and then a little bit of twist right there. Would it be as effective doing this without an angle brush? Um, before I discovered angles, I always used brights, very, very stiff, bright brushes. So let's, that's a good question, John. So let's see. I don't even think I have any more bright brushes, but here's a, here's a bright brush. That's a, a, that's a short-handled, very squared, stiff brush, ruby satin silver bright uh, brush. So let's show you how you might do that with a bright brush. Okay. Hello, and welcome to the Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting. 
can be found at acrylicpaintingwithgingercook.com. Are you ready to take your acrylic painting to the next level? Are you tired of all the chit-chat that Ginger and John do during their live YouTube shows? Well, this is the place to come to. You can start off at the very level of just signing up as a pink member for $14.95 a week, and you'll have access to all of the red membership and below lessons. Those lessons include a lot. We have a lot of lessons anywhere from one cookie all the way up to a full box of cookie. We use the cookies as a term of uh, representing the difficulty or the challenge, as the, case, as the case may be. You can have access to our latest tutorials. Again, at $14.95 for a week trial, you can do this as often as you want. Here are 12 pages of lessons. And there is two, four, there are 24 on the page. You have over 300 lessons right here. And included with the lessons, you'll have all the reference materials you need, the traceables, the originals if available, and if we can share them. Um, you have everything you need to get started. When you're ready to step up your membership and you want to take advantage of the personal art coaching, those are available at the red, blue, and purple membership levels. You can upgrade at any time. You can come back. You can downgrade at any time. Um, what you want to be able to do, though, is improve your art, and we highly recommend giving us a try. Try us for a week. Look around. Kick the tires, as they say, and see if we can't help you become a better artist. Okay, so this has had a chance to dry a little bit. We, it's interesting, while filming this, we lost power and, and um, for about 10 minutes, and now it's back on. So, but I've got pretty much, what, you know, I think the answer to the question was, could you use a bright brush? And yes, you could. And I did it for years. I just, these angles are just, wow, so much better. So, but uh, let's just continue on with what we're doing here. We've got, you know, for instance, one of the things I've noticed is that it's darker right here on next to the vase right here. It's not a white line all the way down, so please don't make one. We started that, but we'll tone that back. And it's got the blue in here. So pay attention kind of to what's there. Let's take a little bit of burnt umber and ultramarine blue. And um, let's make something a little darker next to our, our vase. And we'll um, kind of blend that into our background. I know I want it a little bit darker here. And then next to this this leaf here, remember wherever there's a light, there's a dark. So we're gonna add a little dark to the background. And then I know that for instance, I want something dark underneath the vase and I'm gonna go this way with the with a shadow. And I want to come on the inside of this with something dark. So however you did the background, don't sweat the small stuff. You know, just you just know that you're going to have some dark in here like that. You can always add it if you just kind of keep the colors similar. All right. What I'm going to do that's a little bit different is I'm going to just, when I'm doing the background, I want to just suggest a table. And I can do that. Um... I mean, in his case, you know, he said, well, I've got this down all down in the front here is my table and it's all very light. You don't want to make it one color. Uh, this is something we call painting with a dirty brush where you just um, have a few different colors on the brush at one time. And so you get, that's how that's working. All right, so mm -hmm. we're gonna, a little gold, a little more white there. Yeah, here we go. And let's gray that out a bit. All right, so there it goes. Just don't want it quite that bright. We're going to say painting with a dirty brush. And if that's too light, we'll lighten it. Um, we'll fix that. But there's our table. And what I want to do here is I'm going to do a little light behind this to indicate that there's something back here. I'm uh, changing his background just a little bit because I kind of want to suggest that there's this table here. That I'm sorry, I just feel like we need one. Um, 
So I'm going to just change the background a little bit differently than he had his. Um, Got to be, in fact, in fact, the background actually, if you think about it, the table, might even come out maybe this far. So let's do that. Maybe let's say the table came out this far. I want, I just need something. Sometimes you don't. We've done it where you didn't have it in the background, all kind of blended, but I do want to have of enough of a table where you, you see that there's a light and a dark to this. Um, uh, there's a shadow of some kind here, see, where the vase is. So it looks like it's sitting on the table. Yeah, something like that. See, to me, that just looks, you could blend this part out and then that's okay. You don't have to have both sides. You could kind of blend this out if you wanted to fudge this side, but I really want. It makes more sense than what he had. Yeah, I, I just didn't quite like what he had. He had a lot of this green color back in here in this. It's just sort of this green. He was very happy with this green stuff going, kind of this olive color going all in the background. Let's make this and uh, and there was a little edge here on the table. Okay, just something else. And I, your eyes gonna run right over there. So when that dries, we'll turn that off. Your, remember your eyes go to the darkest dark and the light slice first. So if you're painting a picture of a horse and uh, you have a, a flower in the right hand corner that's brighter than the guy with the horse, no one will notice the horse. They're just giving us a little dot. They're gonna go to the flower. Take a, Think about that. And I feel like the power's shifting it's doing again. It again. It's doing it again. Okay, so we lost the power again. Isn't it wonderful that we, we're continuing <laughs> on? You can see that um, we, we want to keep adding the lights and the darks to the leaves. Before I go any further, I want to show you, uh, for those of our Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting members, I want to show you our newest tutorial that's going to be released uh, this, this week. week. And this is a cheesecake. It was inspired by a dessert that we got on the cruise. And it's really neat how we came to the colors in this because there was a, the photograph, the reference photo, and this are very different. I'm going to show you how we did that. If you like that type of painting in the Academy, we have like the um, banana split. Banana split. And now you'll notice that it's a different style of painting in the sense that the background is more like the background we're doing with the tulips, isn't it? So both of the tulip painting, just want to say that, and this probably could be in the same kitchen because they're similar. So you've got to ask yourself, are my painting neutrals? Because this is what this greens and browns are considered neutrals. This is kind of, even though it's got color, it's more of a neutral background. Conversely, when we did the painting, I don't think I have the, the original to show you right now, but this was our cheesecake painting and it's more like this one. All right, and again, this is a great tutorial. It's an academy tutorial. It shows you how to glaze. The only way you can get a, a color like that is to glaze. Um, this, these are really marvelous videos on, on how to get different effects. And also, they're fun. We have a whole kitchen series in our academy, so I wanted to share that with you. I think there was one more. There was a... Um, I don't know. if it's, I, The first one we did before, which was just a um, lemon meringue pie. And then that was a YouTube one, wasn't it? I think that's a YouTube one. And then also on YouTube, we have an ice cream one. We have some different ones. So uh, the foods are, food are fun to paint. Remember the hamburger that we did on oh, YouTube? Oh, that was a great one. I like that we did, one. We did ham and then sausage and egg was another one we did on YouTube. Yeah. Got some great ones. Uh, food categories are fun. Uh, there's some artists that just specialize in painting food. Did you know that? Yeah. And we so, may focus that way. Mmm, food. Food, yeah. So... All right, getting back to painting our tulips, we're just going to keep on. Um, keep on going through it. So The things we go through for you guys. So we're just going to keep on it. And really, we're either going into the blue or the olive shades of green, right? This is more olive. This is more blue, green, blue, green, olive. See that? Olive, you know, yellow and black make a good olive color. Did you know that? And, good, and chances are the artists in the old EGs, you know, did black. Here's, here's like an olive color, right like that, see? And that could make it a little darker, even put a little brown with it. Okay, here's our here's our olive color. Where else could we put a little of that color? Um, we had a little of that in here, um, under here, where this one kind of bent around. Some of that olive color on our vase. Um, 
not a lot of that. There was just it was just in a couple of places. There was a little shadow of this color around this um this this leaf next to the lighter blue. Okay. But for the most part, I would say that we have this leaf. Ooh, that's too much black. This leaf uh, crossed over in front of the stem on this one. So that's where the this is turning and spinning. Okay. And then the other thing you've got to consider is, you know, what's light and dark next to something else. So um, uh, I would say that... Um, for the most part, we, we're, we're pretty good with the olives. There was a little bit of an olive leaf here, a little bit more in this color. Sometimes you might have to go over the colors again because they, a second coat will look different than the first one. That makes sense? Maybe that's just a little too dark shadow. Okay. Well, you keep refining it with each well, coat. Yeah, yeah, you do. That's what you do. So I'm going to go back into the blue-greens. All right, so it's more into our blue-green colors. And um, I'm going to say this leaf, let's see, do I like that? I think I want more blue in it. Okay, there we go. And just wipe the brush off now and kind of mix these two colors together on the canvas. There you go. Lighten this one up. Lighten this one up on the top. See, I'm lightening that one up. And then it, it spins around. And here's what it does. It spins around and does that. Now, it does this. Let's see, get some more white on the brush. It does it does this, and then I'm spinning it and it's doing that. And then here's this. So this little leaf bent. It's a bent leaf. And it's lighter here where it bent. Okay. And it's gonna follow this other um now we're getting a little bit of gold on the stem there like that, something like that. So take a moment, bend a few leaves. Um, let's figure out where you want your lights and darks of color so that you can differentiate one, one leaf from another. I think I want to still curve that over like that, okay? Um, and I'm pretty happy with that. I've got a little bit of a dark Kind of not too dark, but a little bit of a dark green um, shadow right here coming over the top of this, right? That's where it kind of uh, put some more, it's more of a yellow green, but it's, this is where it's coming over the top, see right there. And um, we know we've got something lighter right here that's coming this way. So as you paint it and add lights or darks, if you see that you've got something in there and you don't have enough color, sometimes you can just add a little white to it and lighten a, a, a leaf. I think I could have a little bit more blue-green there like that. So don't be afraid to um, use the flat of your brush and then spin it. Sometimes you'll get what you know, some marvelous colors because your brush is dirty. So this is a good video on how to use a dirty brush. Um, and also how to twist the brush. How to twist it, yeah. And uh, I th think there's just exercise. some light stuff in here that were just, I don't know, it wasn't really clear on what he was doing there. Um, this, this is doing this like that. Put some yellow in that, too, too black. Okay. So I would say that, that I'm pretty happy with the leaves. Um, I probably could do some few lighter stems now. Here's a lighter stem on this um, uh, tulip. And then this one, this one that's coming around like that, it just sort of spins out. We put this one in, but it kind of disappeared on us. Did you notice? Now let's do some herringbone patterns like that up here like this. Looks like chicken feet. And then we'll put, yeah, all little chicken feet. Put some, they're sort of a pale green with it. Um, maybe this lighter green from, from Salvador was just some white. Kind of over it, right? Like in here, I like that green. 
I want more white with it though. Just ask yourself, where can I put something light or dark? Do you have to dry it? Like for instance, maybe right here I want it lighter, but it fits too wet. I'm mixing I'm trying to mix too many colors at once and it may not be enough. See? So I know that there's something a little lighter right there on this petal. There was some white up here like that, and I can just kind of take my finger and smush it on this leaf. Okay, it came around here like that. And then actually he has this one going off this way. It doesn't even go down. It goes, it kind of twists and does that back up again. I think, it, I think you'd lose a little of that with the frame, but what do we know? You know, just here, let's just make it a little more exaggerated. There's a little bit greener here. You can play with the greens. It's really, um, and it's, it's kind of fun. And like, for instance, here, here's one where they, it twisted back around. This one twisted that way. So just the thing is when you're saying, well, can you look at this and tell me what you need to do? The first thing I want you to do is see if you can find the differences between your painting and the reference and what you think you might do to fix them. See, I'm just going to take a little yellow here and just up here, just do a little outline on that leaf. And I'll take a little bit of this white color here because this isn't light enough right there. There we go. And again, we have the feeling of it's not just the color of the tulips because I want a little light outline on this leaf right here. It's not just the feeling of the tulips. It's the feeling of the leaves. In other words, you know these are tulips because of the leaves too, not just the um, this is almost a pure light blue leaf right here, like that. Wow, let's put some blue down here in the vase. And um, it's got your highlight, and I'm going to do it, I'm going to exaggerate a little bit more here too. Okay, something like that to feel like I've got the glass going. And then here with the top of my glass face right here. More glass-like. More glass-like. So I've got that. Because that's what you're, you know, that's basically what you're seeing. And um, when I look at how dark the green is right here. I just rinsed my brush. I know I want something dark. Oh, I think I'm taking a little purple. I want something dark right there. I'll take a dab of purple into this because I want this dark. Then just blend that out. There you go. See, I mean, there's a few places where you need some dark. And uh, let's just do something under the glass like that. Need something darker in here. So I'm going to take a little bit of that purple color. Something dark next to here, next to this leaf. And then I'll blend it back into the greens. There you go. So you just kind of see something like that. That's really all there is to it. Now, this needs to be a lighter green. So I had, if you have, here's the thing. If you have dark on your brush and you need to go lighter, you've got to clean the dark off the brush if you really <laughs> want to go lighter. So just, just bear that in mind. Are you stating the obvious? Well, it isn't for people because they just get in a hurry, right? People with little patience, you say. Yeah, people with little patience. I want to show this is bending over like that. And brush strokes mean a lot on this particular painting. Oh, they do. Oh, they absolutely do. They absolutely do. You really can't paint these vertically or you know, horizontally. <laughs> totally different effect. Yeah, so then we're putting in a few of those little, some sort of miscellaneous, whatever this stuff is. Eh, miscellaneous. Dot, okay, miscellaneous dots. There you go. <laughs> Don't know what that is. 
let it go. Let's let it go. All right. So let's take a moment and dry all this because we're going to do the flowers last. All right. Let's take a moment to dry all this. So because green and red are complements, it means they're opposite each other on the color wheel. And <laughs> if you have um, green on your brush and you try to make a pink, you're going to dull the color. People say, how come your colors are so bright? You can have green on your brush and go into blues and browns and all kinds of things. But if you're going to go into its complementary color, and this is true of any complement, like orange and uh, turquoise or purple and yellow, these colors, uh, what happens is you start having a hot mess. So avoid hot messes, dry, clean brush, watch for complementary colors um, being dry before you put another, put one on top of the other. Okay. Along that same line, we had a question come in, and you may want to give a sample of this. This came in from Susan. I'm hoping that you that you can explain a painting slang that I hear often, although I finally get it. I know that I didn't it didn't click with me right away. So there's a slang that you're always using, a word you're always using, and she didn't doesn't understand it, but she thinks she has it now. I got a pack back, my personal art coaching back done a little while ago, and my instructions were to gray a background. Now, in my mind, for some reason, the color gray has always been black and white, makes a shade of gray, meaning there is a dark gray on and lighter grays and et cetera, but it's always black and white. But in painting language, I didn't know that gray was really any color mixed with its complementary, and white is, you, is considered a gray or a grain out of a color which caused me great confusion for some times. Can you explain a little further what you're saying? I mean, you say this all the time, gray the color, gray out the color for me. Okay, I can explain that easily. So be, let, let me just take a moment and explain that, all right? And you might wanna just grab a little- I'm gonna grab a little canvas sheet I figured you here. might wanna grab a little canvas. Here's a little canvas sheet here. So it's a bright pink, right? <laughs> so if this is a great bright pink. That's a beautiful pink. A gorgeous. I hate to use that, right? Yeah. Right. What else do I got? It's such a good color. We have hundreds. We have there. hundreds of gray background. All right. Oh, this is such a nice background too, John. Where's that one we were doing today? All right. This is well, the one. That's an ugly one. We, we can use this, right? Are you saying I just did an ugly background? <laughs> <laughs> Let it go. Let it go. All right. So now. All right. So if I want a bright color on a dark background, you all know you have to paint it white first. It's like a bright red or something. Well, let's just take. Let's just take a bright, brilliant green. I'm going to put this green on here. This is the kind of green that you see on clown costumes. I call it a circus green. Okay. Typically so if green I, you don't use. this is a green that I usually mix with something else. Sometimes you want it. Sometimes you want a pop of that somewhere. Because I'll tell you what, let me just show you in this picture. If I put that green anywhere, Wait where your eye's going to go, right? I can always erase it. But look, I'm going to put that green right there. Where'd your eye just go? Oh, yeah. It just slaps you in the face. So uh, now if I add a little color on top of that and gray it out, I'm adding a little bit of yellow oxide, which has red in it. Red's a complement. So I can gray that color out. I want it, you know, or I could dry it and paint over it. I've got, I've got some choices, okay? But that's what I mean about that's very bright. So if I want to take this color, and if I tell you what, if I did that over white, um, let me just show you over white plate, it's even brighter. See what I mean? When you put a bright color over something dark, it won't be as bright as if you put it over something white. If I wanted to gray that, uh, because brown has red in it, I could add a little bit, say, a burnt sienna in that color and mix it. Now, if I add too much brown, I'll get just sort of this mud color. So the trick is, how much brown should you use? That grays it. Maybe I don't need, maybe just less. You see, you see the difference? Now, so maybe the complementary color is 1% or 2%. You can get You can get real mud quick, all right? I could gray that color that way. So when you're saying grain, you're just, you're darkening you're just it. Just really, what you're doing is you're toning it down. You're toning it down. You're taking instance, some of the brightness away. You're taking some of the brightness away. Like for instance, here's bright blue. 
Okay, it's kind of I had a little green. That's a pretty bright blue. I like that color. I'm not against that color anywhere, but suppose <laughs> for a sky that maybe that's a little bright. Remember, here's the thing: colors gray is the farther away in a landscape, the more they gray. So, if I were to take, I'll say, a little bit of orange, like one percent, and add to that, you, you see how that you see how I tone that background down. Let me just put a little white with that. See what I mean? I, could, I, I I tone that background down as opposed to bright colors. So the farther, you know, when I say gray a tone, that's what I'm talking about. Thank you. Well, this is probably dry by now. Well, that's why I thought I'd take that moment to do that. All right. Because that so, comes up. You, you use that term a lot, and I think it might confuse people. They always grab the black and white. Well, we get that. So we're happy to, you know, and if you have questions for our show, Email us at acrylicpaintingwithgingercook.com. Use the contact us. And do they have to be a member? Can they just no. Can anybody no, can anybody sign can in? Write. Yeah, and um, you're going to get a reply back from what? What's the what's the? Um, it's uh, Tech Bear Support. It's called Tech Bear Support. You're going to Tech Bear. If you haven't been to our Tech Bear channel, I suggest you go over there and subscribe. John puts all the technical stuff over there, like how to use your camera and edit your photos, and you know, how, you know, what if you're what if you're you're watching one of our videos and it 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 bogs up on you, right? And you, it doesn't flow through. How to you know change the settings so it easily flows, and uh, you know all kinds of stuff like that. And so that's at the Tech Bear channel. And we also have a new thing on our website called Tech Tips, don't we? Uh, not quite yet. It will come. It's coming soon. <laughs> coming soon. <laughs> coming soon to a website near you. <laughs> Relax. All soon. It's there. Whoa. Oh, blows away. Whoa. All right. <laughs> now I'm just dizzy. <laughs> I'm just dizzy. All right. So I want to paint. I'm going to take some magenta color, which uh, is in a little white. I don't want it too dark. I'm just going to come on up here over the um, um, little bit of white magenta, kind of a medium red color, and I'm just going to, it's not really light, and I'm going to come over my white tulips with that color. So that's kind of the color he uh, used. Now, that's the color in his painting. Now, we could, for instance, go back and look at our tulip colors. Uh, this purple would be a little dark. You see that? I mean, this purple almost like, like a crocus color, a little too dark for our background. We, but we did talk about that. But, you know, again, here's some part. You could do diazonine purple. If you wanted more purple, you could do diazonine purple and white. Right? Yeah, you just have to lighten it up a bit. So you could use that color. Let me just put that one over here. You see, it's not quite as red. Yeah, this is so. What should I do? I know personal preference at some point, but you still would want it lighter, okay? So, um, or you could do a combination of dazzling purple and red. Say, like for instance, I know I want this darker in the center of this one over here, like that, and I know I want it darker right under here. I want it a little bit darker on the bottom of this one. There's a little, so probably our best bet is to do a little bit of a combination of both. And then this one over here is just pretty, we're not talking too much about this one. He barely even painted this one. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, and then we've talking about white and magenta. This one's very light right here. There's not a lot to painting these. So he just, it really isn't. Okay. Here we go. Now we're just going to come in here. So a few quick little brush strokes. There's a little more red in this one. Okay. And then for the highlights, what we're going to do, just give me a second, we're going to dry this and then put the highlight on. Okay. Hey, you guys, I've got two paintings here of a river, but you know what happens when you put them in order? They become a diptych. Diptych comes from a Latin and Greek word, meaning uh, two images that you put together. You know, it's been around for a long time. Triptych is maybe three. What's neat about a painting like this is that you can 
put them on the wall, separate them, and yet it's still one continuous a piece of artwork. But each picture stands on its own. That's the trick. This one stands at its own, on its own as a painting. This stands on its own as a painting. But when you put them together, they really um, they become one big, neat painting. And this is part of a Wave and Water master class, but that's not why I'm telling you about it. Someone will actually um, be able to have a chance to win this diptych along with their choice of this diptych. And let me show you the other paintings we're talking about. If you have been contributing to our Karen Little Scholarship Fund. Here's, so someone says, who's Karen Little? Karen Little was uh, John's uh, wife. She passed away about 10 years ago. They were married uh, 40 years, very happily married. And she was a very generous person, did a lot of knitting and crocheting. And wherever she went, she was constantly giving people things. And, oh, that's so pretty. She'd give them a scarf. She was just, she just personified generosity and kindness. We want to do that. Our Academy does that too. We thank you guys for the years of supporting us and for uh, helping some of our students you know, continue in the academy longer. Um, and so you guys, if, you would, if you've been doing and contributing to us at those um, three spots I mentioned, thank you very much. And uh, we hope you uh, all have a chance to uh, be entered in a drawing to win one of these original Ginger Cook paintings. It's our thank you to you. Here's a little Venice painting. We want to give people a choice. Every quarter from, I think it was, what did you say, December? This one started December, and this is through February. Through February 28th. If you've donated at least $100 to our Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting, Acrylic Painting with GingerCook.com, all the information is on um, in yeah. the, down below. If you want to see, we've got three ways where you can do that. Um, you ha have an opportunity to have your name in a fishbowl for every hundred dollar donation for a chance to win these paintings. There's a lighthouse painting or a wave and water masterclass. There's another wave and water masterclass with the um, with the rocks and the sailboats. And I think this would be cool if you just did like a little rope uh, frame around it. But in any event that we will pick three uh, 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 winners and the first person will have their choice of all of these. And the second person will then get to pick, and the third person will have whatever those last two are. I don't know what those would be. But anyway, it's our way of thanking you for contributing to our scholarship fund of this quarter. And uh, happy painting. And uh, thank you guys from the bottom of our heart. Thank you so much. So I'm going to take some zinc white or transparent mixing white and go over this first and see if I like it a little bit. It's okay, but it's not perfect here. I think I want it a little bit wider than that. I wanted to start with that. Come over here like this. Put the tulip shape in. The same thing here. It's a little bit of white here. And then this. Um, Notice the brush stroke is kind of going down and around on this one. And curved, right? A little bit of white right there. And then up on this top one, uh, it's even a little pinker than that. So just try a little bit more red color in there like this. Like that. And then the top part, we'll just do a little zinc. It's a, your transparent white. Don't want it as bright as these. So I can do some transparent white like that. Come down here. Oh, there's that tulip. And then let's see, let's do the same thing over here. Let's just take some of this. It doesn't have to be as bright. A little bit lighter on the outside. They're variegated a little bit. They have striped colors. Let's think a little bit of white here. This one, they, like I say, he just barely talked about that one. And he gave it a little shape here and here. Let's put some purple back. A little bit of magenta back. And make it even lighter because it's too dark. Um, 
This I went a little lighter on the edge here. And let's put a little bit of this pink color in here. This I want darker. Figure out where it's got to be dark on one side and put that in. Okay, you guys, there's just a there is your tulips, and then he's got we're gonna just take that off, and then we're gonna put these three little yellow dots in because we can. So let's take the white first, just use the corner of your brush like that, see. And I've got one here. Start in the middle and then just make a circle. Don't try to outline it. Just start with the dot and then make a circle with your hand. One's over here. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. I want something a little lighter in here. Just take some white, light, oh, some light green. Those are little berry thingies. Yeah, those are the berry things, but I just want some white. There's just something going on here like that. Um, just, you know, maybe you'll see something I didn't see and knock yourself out. Put it in, right? If you did, here's a little light outline on this petal right here. This is still could be lighter. It's got this sort of this yellow green here, light yellow green. Could be lighter right there. Um, Here we go again. Okay, so that was the fourth uh, time the power's <laughs> gone out today. That's all right. I dried everything and wiped off all the lines, all the little chalk lines. I dried everything. Now I'm kind of looking at that shadow, thinking. Um, Going down to the bottom of the vase. At the bottom of the vase. I'm thinking I ought to just make that just a little bit, you know, something like that, you know, just sort of suggest. You know, a little bit. Shadows have a tendency to get lighter as they go out. So we just want to suggest a shadow there, but not too much. Smudge it a little Kind bit. of smudge it a bit. And maybe just do something a little lighter under here like that. Um, you know, just nothing too, nothing too drastic, you guys. Just, just suggest that, that, you know, that there's a table. Gosh. More than he had. Yeah, I just, I tell you what, it really was important to me, the table. Now, this is a sort of a, uh, his flowers are not, those little white dots are not, they're kind of like, a, there's one that's kind of orange. And, um. Little berry guy. It's a little berry thing here. And then there's one that's lighter than the others. It, you know, the Salvador actually has the color for that. There's a little bit lighter one, right? And here's a little bit of that lighter yellow in a couple of the stems. Um, coming down, maybe Just a little bit of a blue green key. one right here, like this. Um, I actually had something kind of coming across this way, too, and I just figured I'd put it in. Um, that one, um, let's make this one a little bit. Uh, more that lighter green color. This is pretty kind of a light green color right in here. Bringing that down. Just seeing what anything else I want to do, like a little bit of a lighter edge on this leaf right here, like that. And then it kind of came over this way. Like that, okay. And uh, this never got light enough for me right here, so let's try that one more time. Right like that. There you go. But that, my dear friends, is the painting. And I think that um, this is going to be, this goes really nice with the green vase. Remember we did that uh, a few months ago on YouTube, that green vase? You yeah. want to look that one up. That was really pretty. And um, I mean, I really, really like that one. And I feel like I almost could do, you know, obviously it's done, but I feel like, you know, I can almost do a little bit more of the mixing white right here. Lighten that up. There you go. 
you can the thing about acrylics is that you can layer so easily it's silly not to you know there you go just there's some of that white there make sure we have enough white right here on this tulip right here because there's not a lot oh yeah there's a little white up here too just it was almost a yellow white though a little bit of white here i just want to make sure we have the lights where we needed them um and then this we're going to say is a little lighter that's it so could you keep doing you know odd little things oh gosh you could you know and if you go you know remember if you're an orange member and above you can go to our website and see this picture of the original and um consider you know be the detective could you add something to you junior forgot something you could be the one that found it i don't know could you know you just never know when you do stuff like this things dry darker so i would suggest doing that i think what we learned today is that references are very important and uh the last thing i want to mention is uh, be sure to subscribe hope you liked the show i hope you enjoyed the chat come back and watch it again i bet you'll pick up something even a second time you haven't seen put it in your uh playlist and for you guys that are academy members that are taking advantage of personal art coaching where i do personal videos for you about your paintings i certainly hope you've created a playlist on youtube where you're putting those i certainly hope you have and you hope so and if you haven't start doing it now all right so see you next yeah. week we're gonna do some old dead guys again we're gonna do some more of this i think all all february part of march we're going to be doing that during the premieres um let me know what you'd like us to include for questions in the next video. Always send in questions with the contact us. It really helps us know what you guys need help with. And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Ginger Cook, the queen of color, with a blazing brush at the speed of light, and a blank canvas, and a hearty yes and yes, the queen of color, Ginger Cook, and her sidekick, John Little, teach you to paint with acrylics.